founding of company from Sonomics, which has been in Angie Field for over 20 years. So we have uh, extensive uh, uh, the C, the CGMP uh, manufacturer and the CMC protocol. And the uh, most important thing is we also have the in-house, those kind of delivery system. And the delivery system, which is the key of the RNA, um, um, specifically we are talking about the messenger RNA. And in terms of uh, the Scott's question, why we start a company? So here you will see, Tim already introduced myself, so I finished my PhD at Hopkins School of Medicine. My PhD thesis mentor, Burr, is very famous. We can say the number one uh, in, in cancer field. And after my PhD, I went to Wash U Genome Institute, which is the second the largest uh, sequencing center in the States. And the, the first one, the biggest one is Burr Institute. And uh, so we finished the human genome. We also finished the TCGA, which is the cancer genome. And I finished the breast cancer you know, is the Dr. Elaine Mattis, and she was the AACR president and uh, American Cancer Research. And uh, we, we also finished uh, the liquid tumor, like ML and the MDS from the scientist, from the physician, from Haber and the Washia. And then we went to the AstraZeneca and the Johnson & Johnson, and uh, we publish a lot of those, and we have a lot of oncology program, uh, doing everything very, very good. But there's a one, turning point, which is the pandemic. It's happening, it's disrupt our daily life. And uh, so we just, I just personally, I just because of my background, physician, and also I was a cardiothoracic surgeon and finished my fellowship training in Sweden. And then I also have the research experience and uh, academia, and I also have the industry like uh, Johnson Johnson and AstraZeneca. Then I just think there's something I can do. There's something I, I want to contribute. So that's why I quit my job at Johnson Johnson. I start, I talk to the, 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 the holder, the owner of the uh, Synomics. They say, hey, looks like uh, we have a complete story. So why not we take advantage of the new technology, which is the messenger RNA. So, and uh, let's using that strategy and let's, uh, let's design and develop a vaccine and so that's we started the journey and at the beginning it's uh, it's rough i have to be honest with you so we are using our own saving we using all the money from our <coughs> and uh, we don't have any kind of paycheck i mean so and uh, and uh, and uh, now recently we got the funding support. We finished the C round. We got a 2.35 million dollars. So we have sufficient fund to continue, and uh, we have we recruit the the talent. We recruit the excellent people in formulation and in vaccine field. So so we are. We are we are going just working hard, and we are want to deliver the solution for this pandemic. So this is my story. Thank you, Dr. Shen. It's a great story. Can you share with us a little bit where you are in the early stage of trying to develop the vaccine using your RNA technology? Yes. Without revealing anything too secret? I'd um, yeah. love to hear just where you stand in the development side. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So our company, we do have a three pillar. So uh, our company have the first, which is AI driven, which is data driven, so it's kind of uh, uh, episode prediction. And the second one is the one I just mentioned, we have uh, in-house delivery system, which is the key for the messenger RNA. And uh, the third, which is we have the, the messenger RNA platform and uh, we have Uncolitic, we have self amplifiers those kind of messages, those kind of technology. And currently we are focusing on three area, area. One is infectious disease, the second the cancer vaccine and the rare disease. And in terms of the COVID and the from here, you will see COVID. We we are all talking about from the pre and pre clinical and uh, to the phase one, phase two, and the phase three. We want to demonstrate the safety and the efficacy. And the current uh, our program, which is in the pre clinical, we are close to the clinical. So currently, we are communicating with FDA and regarding the R and D. Uh, and so this is. Uh, 
uh, something I want to share about our vaccine very, very quick. So our vaccine design. So you will see the, the slide here, we have different platform, which is uh, for the COVID and the our vaccine, which is based on the RNA. And uh, if you look at the RNA, so they do have some leaders. So they have Moderna and BioNTech, which is work with the Pfizer. And they have, they also have the QVAC. And so those, they are the front line, those kind of vaccine. And, uh, and uh, they also have other platform, like I mentioned, the DNA and uh, adenovirus from the AstraZeneca, from Johnson & Johnson, and from the Casino, well, from the, the China companies. And uh, here is a very quick, the overview you will see there's, uh, right now there has eight or nine program, which is in the phase three, back to the vaccine design. So we are using the same strategy. So if you take a look of the, uh, we are all targeting the spike protein, the full length of spike protein. And, uh, but uh, this slide, which is uh, from Johnson & Johnson, which is from based on the adenovirus 26, you will see uh, they did a multiple uh, modification one is on the cleavage side and another one is also on the S2 subunit. But the goal, the goal here is that they really want to focus on the prefusion status. So, so, so that's why, so you will see the structure change once the, once the, once the antigen, once the, once the virus, they have the pre, you here you will see they have, they, that's a trimer. You will see they're binding with the, the receptor. This is one binding with the receptor. And then you will see once they all three, they bind into the receptor, you will see the structure totally, totally different, which is the after fusion structure. So our vaccine, which is also focusing on the prefusion. So how to make it as a stable, how to make the prefusion stay uh, stable. So that's something we need to do. So our vaccine, we did the modification on the purine. We also did the modification on the subunit. And the most, most important thing is all those kind of design, they're not new. They has been here for a while. So here just shows you one, one reference from like a 2016. Those are the vaccine and study they did based on the MERS. So you will see, and the MERS is, is also the coronavirus. And they say, here you will see, they also did the modification here and you will see they stabilized the prefusion structure. So our company using the same strat strategy, which is stabilize so it's kind of pre-fusion strat strategy. But the most most the important thing is one thing different from as a candidate from the Moderna, from the BioNTech, from different Pfizer is our vaccine is based on mutated strain. The mutated strain is uh, uh, which is different from the Y type, and uh, which is the dominant strain in Europe and also the dominant strain in the States. And there's a paper recently they published on cell. So they are talking about like 80 to 90% of the strain, the COVID strain, which is the D614G mutated strain. So our vaccine, which we can say is the only vaccine, which is based on, designed based on the mutated strain. And this mutation, which is so contagious, which they has, they, as they has been did a lot of research, the data ratio there is 10 times contagious comparing to the Y type. So our strategy is we are going to design target this mutated, this mutated the, the strain. And this is a little bit and uh, things under different is our delivery system. So if you look at the Moderna and the BioNTech, they are all using the lipid uh, delivery system and the uh, lipid nanoparticle, which they call LMP. And uh, for our technology, we have our in-house technology. We are using polypeptide and uh, with the lipid. And uh, so our vaccine, we do have some unique uh, uh, strengths. So, if you take a look, if you compare with our delivery system with the AMP, which is the uh, other companies, other vendors, so we do have uh, some some advantage. One of the unique advantage is the liophilization. 
So which they don't need the cold chain required for the cold chain transportation and the storage. This is really, really a crucial point, which is if you're thinking about the, we are talking about a billion population. We are talking about the, the population across the, across the, across the world. And uh, there's, the, so we do need to have an efficient way, a uh, easy way for, for those kind of transportation and the distribution. So that's what we believe our vaccine has the advantage. So this is a very quick Electro microscope, you will see the surface of our vaccine, and also as a vendor's vaccine, you will see that they are very smooth. But our vaccine, you will see on the surface, we do have a lot of those kind of things st stick out. Those are the uh, polypeptide, and uh, so that's why which uh, will make our vaccine unique. So very quick is our vaccine is based on, this is an example of the live fertilization of our vaccines. So our vaccines have, do have very unique strengths. And so that's, a, that's a why, so that's why we think uh, let's work together. Let's uh, bring all those kind of vaccine vendor and uh, design the best vaccine, design the better vaccines and let's, uh, Let's work. Let's uh, mean fighting mm -hmm. together against this mm -hmm. pandemic. So that's my yeah. story. Yeah. Yeah. That's thank you, Dr. Shen. That's a that's a kind of remarkable for those of us who know anything about the underlying science. That's that's that is interesting. Using that approach for attaching to the to the virus. I, I wonder if you could just for a minute talk about what's happening to develop a vaccine around the world in a very short period of time. You've got different political systems. You've got different strains of viruses. Uh, you've got different financial resources. And it strikes us that there seems to be a collaboration going on that's never happened in medical science. Usually in the former world, it's a bitterly competitive world. Everybody hides their information. You know, there may be licensing and joint venturing, but it's, it's, it's not an open book. This feels differently. Can you talk a little bit about what's happening in terms of collaboration with government, medical research, pharmaceutical, commercial companies, and what's your perception of that as someone who's been in J&J &J and, and some other top companies? Yeah, so, so even this, this pandemic disrupt our daily life. It's nasty, nasty, nasty. So, and uh, this is uh, every, Everybody working from home. The kids is cannot go to school, and the senior they have been locked at their their the senior care facilities. And um, and uh, if you look at just look at the states, and uh, we have over seven million mean I mean confirmed case of COVID, and uh, the we have over two hundred thousand people die um, about uh, this COVID, and so, so that's so that's uh, this is uh, I can say this is a once of century, uh, once of century event, and uh, this is maybe this is a once of our lifetime event. So that's why we take actions, and uh, and uh, not only the government and uh, the industry, and uh, you you mentioned about those kind of big farmers, and also the academia, even the individual people like me, so we contribute. And also the, uh, yes, you, you saw those kind of front runner of those kind of big pharma, like they right have nine program, which are on, I mean, at the phase three. But the one thing you did not see is there's hundreds of those kind of vaccine candidate, which is working day and night to working across the clock. And some company just like us, we are using our own funding and we, we do that. Because we we because uh, because we we want we share the same goal. The goal is, as I mentioned, the pandemic, the virus is our enemy. So that's why we are working hard. But at the same time, we are working very closely. I just give you one example. So there's a lot of program. I mean, in the states, we have one 
um, I mean, one per speed, those kind of program. And uh, I mean, also there's an WHO, so they have also those kind of program, which are the, those kind of testing care, vaccine vendor program. And uh, we and uh, we have the meetings. We have like uh, every couple of weeks, we had a meeting to communicate, to exchange the idea to do. And uh, if you look at the price, just look at the price of those kind of big pharma. They signed a contract with the government. This is just unbelievable cheap. So no farmer is going to make profit on this vaccine. So the AstraZeneca vaccine, like one dose, like $2. Like Johnson Johnson, like they are the price, the whole price for the vaccine. Ten dollar, and uh, if you're talking about BioNTech, the the price we we're talking about twenty dollar, because the, the messenger RNA is a little bit expensive. But nevertheless, it's you you never you never I mean I mean I, I, I don't see I don't see any kind of vaccine price is mean so low, and uh, and also the most important is the speed. So I mean normal. I mean, we took us years and years. Some vaccine like took like almost 60 years. But for this vaccine, I'm very confident we are going to have a vaccine I mean, less than one year. But how can less we do than, that to less not than one, less, less than one, one, one year? year. Today. Uh, no, 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 not less than one year from the start of this pandemic. Uh -huh. Like uh, we are going to have early of next year. So that's what we are we really talking about the the one year. So so early, I mean the first quarter or second quarter of, and we might get some emergency use by end of talk this about, year. Talk about for a second. You were telling me. Uh, you know, that Russia announced that they had an effective vaccine, which you know, some of us were instantly skeptical about, but you, you it's been peer reviewed and there's some information data has been published. What's your, what's your perception on that vaccine? Yeah. So, I mean, it's interesting. So actually people just saw the news, but people didn't know I mean, Russia, but Russia actually, they did a lot of research, a lot of development on the can, can, uh, on those kind of vaccine field. And I just give you one example, like uh, for the MERS. So the slide, so that's one of the reasons I share with you the slide. So I, I show you those kind of vaccine design and the both Madonna, both BioNTech, both and the J&J and the, all those kind of major pharma, they're using the similar design, which is they modify the, the full spike. And this is not new. So this has been, the, the same strategy has been used for the MERS, for MERS coronavirus. And uh, actually Russia is a big player and uh, Russia is the, the leading vaccine vendor for the MERS vaccine. So mm -hmm. they, they, do, they, they do have technology. And uh, and uh, recently they published their phase one and the phase two uh, result on, on on Lancer, which is the peer review, and data looks good. I mean, but but just... unfortunately, unfortunately, so they don't they don't they don't do the phase three. Uh, at least they don't have public, publicly announce those kind of phase three. But they are doing the phase three at this moment. But but my point is that you. You never know. Is there something they did behind the? Maybe they did a human challenge study. We don't know. So and so that's the goal here is we want to see the vaccine which will provide the protection, and the Russia which they 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 do have looks like they do have the technology, but I agree with the mainstream and we should we should not sacrifice the safety. We should we really need to develop our vaccine faster, but at the same time. We, we should not sacrifice those kind of safety. So that's the strategy we do in the States. We do everything in parallel. So, so like even here, right now we do the clinical trial. So we do the talk study and the same time we are prepared for those kind of manufacture already. And the same time CDC already make announcement, already notify and let, the, the, let every state be ready uh, for the distribution. So once the vaccine, the candidate has been, I mean, granted by the emergency year, that vaccine, that particular vaccine would be, would be delivered, I mean, the next day. So the customer and the, the, the public, we will be, will be able to access the vaccine the next day. So that's why we are making, we are make, we can, we can develop a vaccine within such a short period of time. So, so my, 
my my point is uh, yes but and uh, there's a vaccine has been approved by the government by russian government but but just look at other candidate but russian vaccine is not the only one and uh, just look at the other one which are on the phase three clinical trial and we did a very careful work so we really want to let the community let the public know we we are not rushed to rush to any kind of decision to make those kind of emergency mm -hmm. use authorization those kind of full no, approval as can... yeah as the russia they did so we are doing a very careful job. Yeah. Maybe just apropos of that, talk a little bit about what are the basic requirements to commercialize a vaccine for this vaccine regarding safety and efficacy. And maybe as an example of what can go wrong, talk about AstraZeneca and their, their experience. Yeah, for for AstraZeneca, yeah, recently if you if you check the news, if you follow the news, you do see so there's a news um, happen. I mean, they they there's a uh, uh, there's a lady in Britain which has which has the transfer uh, transverse uh, myelitis and uh, which is uh, during the clinical trial, and uh, unfortunately, this is not the first case. This is already the second case, so that's why AstraZeneca they they, they hold they stop the clinical trial, and uh, in in the states the phase three clinical trial is still on hold, but they resume the clinical trial in England and in Brazil and uh, and uh, because they did a careful those kind of studies and they want to so so that incident so that case really shows we pay extreme extreme attention for the safety and because what, what it's a, because it's kind of normal once you have thirty thousand people which is um clinical try, there's still something will happen, right? So, but we don't know it's because of the vaccine or it's because of the, 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 the volunteer, the healthy volunteer. So that's why we need to take a close look. We want, want to make sure that's our, the vaccine the candidate, which is safe. So that's why they put the clinical trial on hold. They did a care for those kind of stuff. So and that's we'll, my message, yeah. And how, how do you, and I want to want you to say, talk about this upcoming FDA meeting that sounds important, but how, how, what, makes, what makes a vaccine sufficiently efficacious that it could be approved and used? How do you measure that statistically? Yeah, so actually it's very simple. I, so I can be, so, so we are for the phase three clinical trial. We did a randomize those kind of, uh, those control and uh, so some portion of the volunteer, they took the vaccine, but there's a portion of those kind of volunteer, they took the placebo, which is, but they don't, they don't know, nobody knows that. And uh, even the physician, even the clinical trial inside the people, they, they have no idea. And then later then we count. We count. Uh, we count. Uh, there's a I mean confirmed uh, case, right? From from the population, from all those kind of registers. So and uh, so they they do, and then we we want to check. So the goal here is the vaccine need to provide at least fifty percent protections. So that means yes, if you have the vaccine, you have less those kind of confirmed case in those kind of volunteer who yeah. took the vaccine. And but for the volunteer for the they took the the placebo, they have more case. They have more those kind of confirmed case. So the the goal here for AstraZeneca, so the current goal is they are talking about uh, uh, fifty percent, but for BioNTech and the Moderna and the the goal is a little bit high because in the States so so they they are go is sixty percent. So so the vaccine group should be should should provide at least a sixty percent of those kind of protections. So this is but how you do that? So there's the different strategy. So like back go back to the Madonna years. They they are during the phase three clinical trial. So they are going to they are going to take a look at the study. So like for Madonna, they would they were in the middle they were they are going to I mean to data I mean review for like two times for biotech they are going to do the data review for four times so they are more frequent trade so they are going to, to check and uh, how they do so so once they count so they have population they have phase three so they have so once they for madonna if they have 53 
mean? So it's kind of confirmed case, yeah. but because they don't know it's from the placebo group. I said, then they are going to take a look. So that's the their first data. But for the BioNTech, it's more frequently as a they will do four times. So their cut point is the 32. So if they have the if they mean confirmed case, 32 confirmed case, they are going to they are going to unblind, they are going to take. Uh, so those kind of cases are from the uh, the vaccine group of gas from the placebo group, and then they do the status. Uh, those kind of then the goal is they want to see is it, but this is just the efficacy. The most most yeah. important thing is the safety. Just as I mentioned, as uh, as uh, what the AstraZeneca they took the action, which they hold, but because this is a kind of kind of normal. This is kind of normal for larger scale those kind of clinical trial. This happened. I mean, so the, but uh, the 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 important message is we need to take extreme extreme cautious because the vaccine is not for the patient. The vaccine we really talking about is for the healthy volunteer, for the general public. We are talking about a billion people. So anything happened, and uh, it's happened before, and uh, happened before for the, some corona uh, virus vaccines. It will ha once it's happened, it's really really scared the community, really scared about the public. So people will be hesitate to take those kind of vaccines. So, but the vaccine is so important, and um, because if you look at the Sweden story, they have herd immunity story. So. So all other European country, they have the second wave very, very, but the Sweden, so they still continue to decrease. So that means, I mean, to Why build that? that. What, 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 what is the reason for that? Yes. We, hear, we hear people say herd immunity, that's the ultimate answer. I mean, I don't want to be part of the herd that gets it, frankly. Yeah. But, uh, what, What's the explanation for that? Scientific? So the so the explanation is very simple. So the 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 story actually the the basic uh, the I mean the rationale behind the herd immunity is just like the vaccine. So why we need to take the vaccine? So why we need to take a vaccine? So once we have the vaccine, we are going to have the antibody. We are going to activate our T cell, CDA T cell. So those we are going to kill those kind of virus. We are going to block the virus enter to our. Uh, uh, to our cell to our, our body, but same story to the herd immunity. The herd immunity is they say there there is no virus. They just let's just open. Let's uh, let's continue our daily life and let the viruses spread. So once you have sufficient the people which has those kind of antibody, so the virus will stop uh, will stop those kind of uh, uh, spreading. So just like we did. So that just like we we took the vaccine. Once everybody has the vaccines, so, so the vaccine is there's there's no human they can affect so the virus the, so the virus basically they stop the transmissions so we stop the, the transmission of those kind of so that the, there's no place for virus to go so this actually is something the sweden did and they also they are sensing they did the uh, the asia the 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 not the, the the east asia like uh, including some china they also did they did a very careful those kind of tracking isolation and then you if you check japan if you check uh, those korea and also china so east asia so they are in a better shape at this moment so literally their life is back to normal but uh, they are very careful so but uh, but for us for the states we are taking the the vaccine main strategy so that's why we are going to develop the efficient vaccine so when the same story to the herd immunity because we don't need to do the herd immunity we have a better smarter way a smarter strategy to 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 build those kind of antibody for the general public. So that's why we are doing that. But the the philosophy is the same. The philosophy is we are going to stop. We're going to block the virus transmission. So 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 that's uh, so at this moment. So it looks like Sweden mean they. They, they they did when they uh, did the February fe the February's job, but the, we can do the same. So the same is uh, as I mentioned before. I mean, if uh, yes, virus is our solution. But before we have all those kind of EOA, before we have those, those kind of approve those kind of virus, there's something we really can do. Everybody we can do is face mask. We really can using the face mask to block those kind of transmissions, and the one there the one piece of very important the evidence of the face mask is if you look at, yes we have we do see the second wave, but the se the same time the death rate the, the daily deaths so it's kind of case is still 
it's not, we don't see the second wave of those yeah. So that means there's uh, some reason. So one of the reasons is uh, the current infection, uh, current case, it's mainly because of those young people, like uh, people when, when went back to work, uh, I mean, I mean, people, they go back to school and also, so they have uh, better, they don't have the, those kind of disease. They are not counts as the vulnerable mm -hmm. people. But the most important thing, most important thing is uh, we have all those kind of therapy ready. We have all those kind of, uh, uh, we also, People already knows and you, if you go to Costco, if you go to the, any kind of store, no face mask, you cannot go inside and it's very strict. And so, so I think we already took action. So, but we need to continue to do this because once you have those kind of face masks, so you have less virus load. So even you, you got some chance, you got some, you got a, you got some virus inside, but you have much, yes, much sir. less, less yeah. kind of virus. So that's make perfect sense. Yeah. But actually, this is not from my talking. So there's a study has been published, uh, peer reviews us. They already show the current the the virus load, which is less than the the previous ones. Thanks. So that so it's working. So once it's working, why are we not? To, I mean, continue to do that. Let's uh, keep the social di distancing. Let's wash our hands and uh, and uh, let's wear the face mask. And uh, Thank you. yeah, so that's yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's the stop the that's the easy way, and uh, the, also the efficient way. Let's do that. At the same time, we're working hard, like the vendor, like us, like everybody. So we are, we try our all we can. So we just we we just want to contribute. We want to be part of those kind of, uh, the, the the fighting, and we try to stop the the pandemic. So that's what what we are doing. So just Thank like uh, yeah, even me. So I'm I'm already in my office. So we we I mean before so we come to the office very we come to the company very early at seven or eight. And then, I mean, we, we when when we go home very late. I mean, so I mean, we can we, like, yeah, like uh, we we are duck in, we are duck out. So before yeah. we, when we when I'm in the parking lot of the company, it's it's dark, it's heaven. And when we go home, it's already it's it's dark yeah. again. So that's why we are we are working well, extremely hard. But it's exactly. not just us, but the whole community. Just like you mentioned, all those kind of big farmer, all those kind of even the government, even the FDA, they're working extremely, extremely high, uh, the hard. And uh, even for those kind of vendor, like we do the talk study, and we talk to the Charles River, we talk to the Covens, and they don't, they all told us they said, "Don't we put the COVID as our top priority?" So the lead time for the the COVID is always, always. I mean, the once you're coming so you will be in the program. So they have all those kind of talks, study, I mean, those kind of pathologists those ready for you, all those kind of animal ready for you. So that's the reason. So that's why we can, not just the, the government pouring the money, yes, the funding support is one thing, but those, all those kind of funding mainly into the big farmer, but we also have the community. So we, it's really kind of the, 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 from the bottom up. Yeah. Everybody, we are taking actions. So that's all. I really appreciate the invitation. I really appreciate we have the opportunity to to talk to to the ACG and to also talk to the member of the yeah. ACG. We spread the message. We just let the ACG knows the we, the our our. I mean, actually, Marin, actually, this local actually is the vaccine hub. Look at it. We have the federal. We have the NIH. We have an ARD. We also have the Novavax. We also have also the the big farmers, and uh, we also GSK vaccine. And we also Hopkins. We also have the University of Maryland, uh, and uh, yeah, the, the most important, uh, also the military. Military, look at those biodefense, those kind of militaries, those are federal rec. So that's just, I just give you one, one example, the number, I just give you some number. The, the P4, the, the, the P4, those kind of lab. And in Maryland, we have like three. And the, the, and the P3, which is a BLA3 level, which is a high level. And we have close to 30 
in the mm -hmm. American. So that's so that's really unique. So that's why I always I want I talk to the American I mean, I mean commercial I mean commerce. I say why not to make make this area as the vaccine hub? Let's bring all those kind of investment. Let's bring all those kind of vendor and uh, the and the, all those kind of here. So so it's not just the Boston. The Boston yes they are the pharmacy they are doing good. But the, we have strengths. We have very unique stuff which is the vaccine. And if you're in a long run, if you look at it from now to the next 10 years, I, I guarantee not only just the government and all even the, the investor, I mean, they will be pay extremely, extreme attention to those kind of vaccines, those kind of, those kind of, those kind of, those kind of business. Dr. Yeah. Doctor, we had some of that on our Q&A to talk about, you know, our, our hub is a vaccine center, which is a really brilliant idea and be worth having you come back and promote that further. We got yes. a bunch of people with questions, though, Dr. Shen, that I want to make sure we get to. I'm going to ask you my my last question. This is my personal interest. I don't understand. When, I'm assuming, as you've explained, that this virus mutates. Yes. So, am I assuming that whatever vaccine we come up with is of short duration? That it re will require annual administration to to match and track the mutations in the virus. Yes. Is that a fair assumption? Uh, yes, so that's why we are doing uh, hard, and uh, we do have a group. Actually, is yes, all, 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 all. Con I mean, the, the country. I mean, across the across the world, they are all doing that. So once they sequence the virus, they submit. So they all submit. Today we have a hub. We have uh, tens of tons of those kind of viruses. So we check. We want to see if they can the kind of virus they have been mutated, but. Uh, we also need to keep in mind, and uh, and uh, the current uh, the all those kind of top those kind of big pharma. We are using the similar strategy, which is we are all designed the vaccine based on the full length of the spike, not just RBD, not just a portion, the small okay. portion of those. So we are going to have those kind of antibody. So even one epitope, even one side, they have been mutated but they still have the protection from other side. So, so people, they already did the test. It looks like uh, the, the current vaccine, the current antibody, they, they can neutralize not the white type of virus. They can also neutralize the, the virus I just mentioned, the mutated uh, the strain D614G. But my argument is uh, here, yes, it's good. You have the vaccine, which is the current existing virus, the vaccine, which can be targeted. But uh, why not we ha also have a vaccine which is uh, designed based directly from the mutated one, the, the dominant strain in the States one. So yeah, that's, that's my, sure. yeah, so that's my argument. Your but the most, principle. yeah. But the most uh, most important thing is another message I really want to deliver is look at the history. Look at the through the 1918 through pandemic. So 1918, there's a, a turning point. So there's a huge mutation that happened and uh, they, which is the, 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 in the summer of the 1918, if you look at the history, so you can Google. The, yeah. So once they happen, so they killed those kind of young, the young people. And uh, so it's, uh, it's not just increased uh, contagious. And also the death, uh, the death toll is, I mean, it, they just kill. And uh, so we are blessed. Though I have to be very honest to the community. We are really blessed. The coronavirus, they are not uh, muted, which increase those kind of killing power, but we need to be ready. So that's why we, so that's why we track those kind of virus. We track their mutation. We track their sequence very, very closely. So that's why we are ready. Yes, our company's vaccine currently we are based on the D614G. Once they are mutated, our company will be ready. Not our company. I think because that's why the the states. Why that's why U.S. they they focus on the new new vaccine like uh, Moderna and the BioNTech. I'm guaranteed they are also uh, watch very closely. So that's why we need a uh, we need a uh, we need uh, help. We need the uh, support. We need uh, everybody contribute. So once they have any kind, just in case. Just in case if there's bad things happen, we will be ready immediately. The immediately, this is very important. Okay. We are we are not talking about years, so because because we cannot afford another year to 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 get the new virus. So once that happens, so the current for Madonna, so they the current they just like uh, one month. So from design to the clinical trial, so that's why we are focused on so the, let, the, the let, new technology. Let me ask you, because I want to get to some of these questions, and apropos of what you just said, 
Uh, I'm going to give you a couple of questions from the audience, Dr. Shen. One of them relates to confidence in the vaccine. What's the, go what's the government's role uh, in coronavirus vaccine development and citizen confidence? I think it's an important question in the vaccines, positive and negative. So you government support, but also what could or should the government be doing to encourage people that the vaccine will be safe and should be taken? What are your okay. thoughts on that? Yeah, so yes, the, so the, for the government, for the regulatory, so like the FDA, so they already published the guidance very early. So for the guidance for the COVID-19, those kind of, all those kind of vaccines, what's the primary primary point, what's the what's the efficacy, what's the safety. So everybody in the vaccine I mean, field, we crystal claim. So this is one thing. Another thing is they also have the emergency use authorization guidance, which they will be released pretty soon from FDA. So that's one thing. And the, 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 another thing I have to mention, not just the government, they also the farmer. Just, if you take a look at the, the BioNTech, if you look at the Pfizer and the, the Moderna and the even AstraZeneca, and the, even the Johnson Johnson, all those kind of big play. They published their uh, clinical trial phase three. I'm talking about the hundreds of those kind of pages of those kind of protocol, mm -hmm. clinical trial protocol to the public. So why they are doing that? So the, they really want to make uh, the community uh, be sure and uh, they, we, they, we are taking every step. We are not just rushed to, uh, to, the, to any kind of decision. So it's every step is crystal clean. And also the, the, the incident that we just mentioned about the AstraZeneca ones, it's a really sure and uh, the, we are taking care. We are really taking the safety issue very carefully. Once this happened, so we are going to hold all those kind of clinical trial. And uh, back to the government, yes, administrations. Yes, we are, it's the, 2020 is really special. Everybody knows it's a uh, it's election year, right? So I mean, we do have some noise, and we I do have heard some. That, yeah, so so I, I have just, I just to be honest, because the reason is I run for the state delegate, so in 2018, so I I know the campaign stuff, I know those kind of those kind of things, so 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 that's why I think I think uh, yes, we all heard about the noise, but we have to have to trust the. The regulatory, we have to trust American people because if there's something wrong happened, so the media, the, all those kind of, we are going to step out. We are going to speak out our voice. We are going to say this is not right things. And so that's why, so sometimes you have to trust the Thank power you. of the people. And so that's why we are doing. And, uh, and the most important thing is sometimes you you should also see something behind all those, like we have hundreds and hundreds of those kind of companies, just like us. We are working so hard. So there's no, so there's no reason we are, so, so that's, why, that's why I'm confident. Okay. That's why, so I mean, the most brilliant people and we are in this field, they are, mm -hmm. we are working, so that's, I'm confident. But I, I mean, because the ACG, I do have a, Suggestion, but the ACG really need to promote uh, this. Uh, you know, the vaccine means uh, the point. Let's and make uh, this area as the vaccine hub. I mean, I I'm that. not talking about the national vaccine hub. I'm talking about a global vaccine hub. I mean, let's build it here. Let's bring and all see. the job, all those kind of opportunity. Let's uh, let's let's do that. So that's that's, a, that's, that's a subject we should visit another day. Let me. Yep. I've got I've got a bunch of questions teed up. Tim, how long do we have? We've got uh, about another 10 or 15 minutes, so okay. pick them off. Thank you, Tim. So uh, this is a question, I think, from Mike uh, Fisher. Um, and and you, you, you touched on the fact that this drug development or vaccine development is different because you're doing parallel tracking all the things that usually in the drug development world are incremental, the science, the regulatory, the manufacturing, the distribution. It's all happening now. So the question is rapid manufacturing and distribution seems like a huge undertaking. If you get to clinical trials through the trials and have a promising candidate, who's going to take the handoff and actually do the manufacturing and distribution? How is that going to work? I think is the basic question. So they actually they already start. They already started. The, it's 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 ready. So they already. So I just give you one example. Also, it's from local. 
So there is a company which is also our neighbor, which is the company which is they call Emerging by Solution, and uh, which is also at the professional, uh, professional drive, which is I mean five minutes walking from my company. So, so they are a huge. So they they manufacture the vaccine for Johnson and Johnson. They manufacture the the, the the vaccine for the Novavax and also the Vax Art. And uh, we are also talking to the BioNTech. So they acquire a lot of sites in Baltimore. I mean also local. And uh, they also have the site in California. In all those kind of. So not only those kind of big ones and also the military so they step in so all those kind of so 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 I, one thing is they are already manufacturing all those kind of vaccine they they are doing things in parallel so it's not just like wait for the eua then we start no it's already there it's uh, just once it's approved it's uh, already on the distribution chain it's already on the and at the same time the the distribution chain they're also working hard they are make sure Sure, there's a ready they are also good those kind of logistics those kind of stuff and uh, so yes it'll be a huge waste if the, this particular candidate did not uh, get approval but yes. at the same time we are really talking about we save those kind of months and months of those kind of time we are talking about human life we are talking about uh, bring as to the normal. I'm not talking about the new normal. I'm really talking about the end of this pandemic. So so this kind of cause, those kind of cause, those kind of manufacturing cause, I think uh, it's worse. So that's why we do everything parallel. Actually, here I just give you one small example of how, what, uh, what the what the what the in parallel means and uh, how how we speed up those kind of process. Uh, I mentioned the talk study. I talking about they put all the top priority. So we, there's there's a lead time is there almost there's no lead time. So there's another thing is the regulatory review. So previous, if you are scheduling a pre and meeting with the regulatory with FDA, it takes like eight weeks at least. So you got all those kind of response, but for COVID for the vaccines, so usually after one week and once they receive your package so they reply back online so immediately so so just look at it so so every every step counts every those kind of small stuff that's really counts so that's why we um we are making history so that's mm -hmm. i have to be very honest with you so that's why this might be the only vaccine which I got approval I mean, within a year or around a year so and uh, so that's so that's the that's the bloody truth so but the, the bloody truth is not from nowhere it's uh, it's really from the hard working the collaboration across so, all different you know so regular Dr. Regular. Shui, you actually anticipated uh Shukumar's question we had about what is the FDA doing differently can do differently to expedite vaccine approvals without sacrificing safety I think you've said they're making extraordinary efforts to move quickly. Would you mind sharing with people what's going to happen on October 22nd? With the yeah, FDA yeah the, actually it's not just uh, October 22nd. So FDA have the meeting with those kind of big farmers, those kind of big vendors that frequently. So they they have the meeting and they also the warm uh, speed of those kind of program. They also have the internal meeting. So they have a lot of those kind of meetings. So on um, particular October 22nd, so they they are also going to have some data review. So they have the data. So as I mentioned before, the, the Madonna's, those kind of phase three clinical data because they once they have the 53 those kind of accumulated those kind of 53 case so they are going to unbind they're going to take a close look and for the band tech they are doing four times they are 32 once they have the 32 case they are going to so 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 um on the october 22nd they're going to review the data they are going to see is the vaccine group they really provide those kind of protection yeah so if they do if they show the the efficacy I cannot say, I mean, I, this is just my personal view. I mean, it's not uh, representing anything, not even representing my company. So I'm just saying, they might, they might, uh, they might issue the emerging by, uh, emergency authorization, but, uh, but uh, the the new guidance is you have to wait for two months. But that that new guidance has not been released at this moment. So so literally, so literally, so they can do it just based on the data. And uh, on October second, so we might have the first EUA for the for COVID vaccines. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 
I, I see a couple more questions, uh, and I'm, I, I could ask people in the audience to do it, but I think just in the interest of time, I'm, I'm going to read it. Here's a question from Dean Rutley, a well-known virologist in our community. Dean's, Dean's question is, what are your thoughts on Johnson & Johnson's vaccine uh, taking a different approach that as human cells produce coronavirus proteins, uh, immune system doesn't require vaccine to be kept frozen and only require one administration, one shot, not two. Any quick thoughts on that? Okay. Yeah, so yeah, so actually, I'm from Johnson Johnson. I mean, <laughs> you you saw my CV, you, you yes. know. So I I do you know. So actually, Johnson Johnson, they are they are they are really they are really strong at the vaccine field. So if you look at the Ebola, so the Ebola has been vaccine. They have been a pro, and uh, so this they are particular this particular vector we are talking about adenovirus twenty six. Uh, so that's uh, that's vaccine is mature. This has been used by other vaccine program. This has been tested by I mean, hundreds of thousands of the, uh, the people already. So it uh, has been already been proved that's, uh, that's a safe, it's, it's a safe one. So that's why, so originally, so they are talking about they are in clinical trial in September. They are just talking about phase one. But now they started the phase three clinical trial yesterday. So so that's huge. So back to the dose, back to the, the dose. Yes, we, we do see, uh, I don't know, where, I mean, for the, for as like the RNA base, for the messenger RNA, for the Madonna and the Bantech. And uh, we, yes, we do need the two dose because the nature of the platform so the so you need to the boost you need to activate those kind of immune systems the both uh, cd4 and the cda and then you have the second the boost uh, you know need to uh, the injection but for the jnj ones why it's different because it's the platform uh, but the and the, even the same platform even the adenovirus uh, they are also different just look at the AstraZeneca. They are using chimpanzees, the adenovirus. And if you look at the CanSino, which is the China virus, they are using uh, adenovirus 5. But the problem of the adenovirus 5, which is, they has been in general population, like 60, 70 percent of human, they already have those kind of being infected. So we already have the antibody. We already had an antibody against those kind of adenovirus five. So once you have the vaccine, which using adenovirus five, so so the antibody actually will target those kind of vaccines. So that's why you need like uh, for the for the second mm -hmm. dose, second injection. But for the adenovirus twenty six, the Johnson Johnson ones, it's not it's it's not it's not uh, has been infected by the general public. So so that's why we for general public we don't have the existing yes, antibody sir. targeting. Sir. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So so that's why they are so strong, and they that's that's why they only need one dose, and that's why they are so safe because it's it's really it's a mature, and they are they Johnson Johnson J is huge. So say so they they mobilize their all their resource, all their, all their, my previous co-worker, they are all working really hard. So that's one thing. And that's, um, so that's the philosophy behind the j, j So I think that they did a very careful work. And as a, it's a, from the publication, from the data, it's, uh, it's good. Right. I, I, in my view, let yeah, me, this let, might be, yeah. Let me stop you. We got through almost every question, but not quite every one. I know we're up against the, the hour, 10 o'clock. Uh, so I want to turn this back to Tim to wrap up. But if you're available, we could leave this. There are other questions people have. If you are available, we can leave the line open and let you respond. I don't know what your time constraints are. Yeah, so I mean, and, uh, I mean, feel free. And the ACG, it's really a pleasure to meet the, the Corey and the, the members of the ACG community. And just feel free, after the meeting, feel free to email my business card to the EC, ACG member. And uh, feel free to email me any kind of question. And uh, we can, from the email, from the, from the message. And, uh, and uh, I'm ready. I and mean, if you do need me come back to have another session talk about how to build a vaccine hub i mean yes i'm i'm ready to contribute that's a great that's yeah, a so, we'll yeah so that's uh, that i'm local i can i'm i'm available anytime you want so thank you that's, that's my commitment what, full of information let's see tim let me turn it back to you i know we're on a clock here yeah, absolutely. Hey, thanks. Thanks, Dr. Shen. Thanks, Scott. And uh, I think uh, all of us are leaving here knowing a heck of a lot more than we knew coming in. 
Um, it, it, to me, says a lot about the, the lack of the data that is coming through the press today um, versus opinion. So it's great to get opinions from a guy like you that are, are well-founded. So thank you, thank you very much, to, uh, Dr. Chen. Um, we've got uh, another event coming up on the October 13th with Larry Sabato, who is going to be giving us his crystal ball of the election. Uh, that's a major event that's at 8.30 on October 13th. Um, and please join us uh, and the rest of the, uh, the attendees. We're gonna go into breakout rooms. And you know, Dr. Shen, if, uh, if, you're, if you can stick around, we'd love to have you stick around. But if not, we completely understand you are doing God's work for us. So uh, please continue. And, and we thank your entire team for all the hard work and efforts they're putting into to make this country safer.